The late great Mark Douglas says, what you fear is not the markets, but rather your inability to do what you need to do, what you, when you need to do it without hesitation. And there was another quote from Douglas, and I couldn't find it last minute, but basically he said, if you're stressed out, you haven't, in paraphrasing, you haven't fully accepted the risk of the trade. And by the way, I see you're here tonight. George, the, the thing is, and I know you're a sponge and you're, you're anxious to just make a million bucks as quickly as possible, but one thing that would that would immensely help you is to just trade at a size that's meaningless and then slowly increase your size and get the reps in until you feel confident in yourself, confident in the methodology, and as importantly, confident in following the methodology. Along the lines of eliminating fear and anxiety, by the way, I did a complete presentation on this, and I've probably redone it a few times. And if you go in and dig around on my website, you'll probably be able to find a few of them. And I think a few of them have made them into the members area too. But eliminating fear and anxiety, and, and you know, the last minute I put, I know, ha ha, in there, because we're all human, right? But one big thing you can do, as I just alluded to, is accept the loss going in. George says he got it. Well, good. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, George. And, and this is what kills me is I see a revolving door of people come through. And just recently somebody came through and they never asked for help or anything. And they, they went through this period where I didn't recommend anything. And then I recommended a few things and didn't work out or whatever, vice versa. And they left. And it's like, okay, well, if you'd have told me your struggles or, or told me you were struggling, then I could have said, well, hang on a second. You've only been at this two weeks. Why don't you just watch it for a little while and see what happens? Or better yet, why don't you go back and look at the last three years, four years, five years, the archives are there. I know it's it's painful to do, but go in and do that. And that means a lot more than me giving you a spreadsheet with everything that, that how it worked, good, bad, and differently. It's much better to actually go in and see them work, what happened and what didn't happen, what I thought would happen and what would, in, would actually happen. Again, good, bad, and different. But anyway, except that loss going in. One thing, one thing you can do, and I hate to bring this up, but this is something that I had a conversation with Larry Connors probably 20 years ago about this. And the conversation was along the lines of if you're not going to use stops on your trades, which I preach and everyone else preaches, right? Then maybe trade something like long only options where you can like I said a second ago, except that loss going in, but you could also have a limited amount to lose. So toward, the, not that I'm going to not use stops, is that a double negative, but toward the end of the week, like today and, and tomorrow on these weekly options, on these ETFs, like sometimes instead of going in and let's say I want to trade a thousand shares or whatever, if the ETF is pretty cheap, the option that is, to where I'm not risking a whole lot of money. I could say, well, okay, it's only $200 for these options. I don't know, $200 is $200, don't get me wrong. But I can go in and I know that's all the risk that I have to risk and I can manage that risk from there and hopefully flip out the options and improve upon it. But anyway, if you're not gonna use stops and you're not good, you're not willing to accept those losses or whatever, long only options is something that you might wanna consider, but you know, again, I'm hesitant to say that because it does open up a can of worms, but I'm able to, the, the, I think the reason I'm bringing them up is whenever I put an option position, I immediately record a loss of whatever that position co cost me. And then when I sell the option, I'm able to put that money back. And that comes out, then obviously the cost comes out of the position. But let me get back to this, except the loss going in and then never forget garbage in and garbage out. So make sure that it is worth a potential loss. So that that kind of circles back to the pre-mortem thing I talked about quite often, or I talk about quite often. I preach and preach and preach about the post-mortem, like after the trade, go in and see how you did and rate yourself, not so much on how much you made or how much you lost, but whether or not it was a good setup going in. And one way to get better setups is to accept that loss going in and if it's a mediocre setup, now not overnight, but over time, you will get enough experience to where you'll say, you know what, this is kind of mediocre going in, I think I'm gonna pass. And I'm not gonna put any capital in harm's way. And as I've said before, if you're feeling F, yeah, when you look at a trade, you just can't stand it, 
then by all means, take the trade. If you reach a point when you lose in a trade and you could say, I would with 100% conviction take the same exact trade tomorrow, then you have reached that, that true enlightenment. Now, even if you look back at it and said, holy crap, what was I thinking? That's okay, because you just learned something from that experience, provided you don't say, oh, I just got, I was just unlucky, that was bad luck. And if you could separate luck from skill, write me a letter, right? Then you you figure this game out. If you bet, if you blame losses on bad luck, and some sometimes, of course, if it's a beautiful setup and everything's just all the stores are aligned, everything's perfect, it looks great, and you know shit happens, it doesn't work out. That's okay. Maybe you were unlucky, but you got to be really careful. And Amy Duke talks a lot about this in her Thinking in Bets book. So I would highly recommend you read. You can always go to daveflanderscom slash book dash two there. <laughs> I would take that same trade, but I would take that mf -er off my watch list. Oh yeah, good point, Craig. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, that's that's the that's when I say that's when I say I say good day, sir. Is when it's like I get stopped out, and ten seconds after I get stopped out, I take that trade off of my watch list, unless it's something I think it's set up again. And, you know, maybe I got TKO'd on it or something, and I'm like, well, hang on, this thing still looks really good. I did get knocked out of it. But if it starts to implode in earnest and knocks me out, that's when I take it off the watch list, because that will, that will mess with your head. The beauty of what I do is, or the advantage, or however you want to look at it, is looking at 2,000 charts a day, and I did the math a while back, and I forget exactly how much it is, so I'm probably going to under-exaggerate, believe it or not, but it's probably like 10 million charts I've seen over my lifetime or looked at at least trying to figure out the markets and try to find the best stocks and crypto and then occasion is forex and some other things like that odd days of that nature but one that's one huge advantage is just putting those reps in and doing that work but one of the disadvantages of doing that is i get to see every stock that moves i get to see every stock that i should have caught i get to see a lot of stocks that i got stopped out of come roaring back and that can be a bit of a, a bit of a mental drain, but you just kind of have to power through it. But yeah, take it off your watch list and don't let it aggravate you anymore.